Being a Manchester United fan right now is like being stuck in a civil war. United fans arguing, Spurs are looking like they're going to appoint Conte after the weekend in a game where Solskjaer could have been sacked or Nuno Espirito Santo could have been sacked. We won 3-0. He was sacked. Conte's going to Spurs. What's going on at United? There's just there's so much, so many arg in arguments. As I said, it feels like a civil war. But it's still football going on. We had a 3-0 win against Spurs unexpectedly with an unexpected use of a 3-5-2 from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. What's going to happen against Atalanta tomorrow night? Another crucial game for United, in both for Solskjaer and in and in the you know the grand scheme of this season. We need to win and top this Champions League group, get out of the group stage. A group stage we should be getting out of with Atalanta, Villarreal and Young Boys. But who will start? Will we stick to the 3-5-2? What I'm going to do in this video is run through my predicted and my preferred 11s for that game. So please, if you would, subscribe to United People's TV. If you do enjoy it, please let me know what yours is in the comments. But let's take a look and discuss both the formation and the starting 11 that Solskjaer will probably use against Atalanta. And the first conversation, as I said, is about the formation. 4-2-3-1 has been Oli's go-to all season long. Whether you agree with it or not, he switched to that 3-5-2 and you can't argue with the result that we got against Spurs. And I don't think Solskjaer is going to be changing that for the Atalanta game. I think, if, if anything, it sort of suits playing Atalanta more. We're definitely going to stick to that formation. We've waited like 20 games, 20 more, more than 20 games to get a clean sheet. We finally get one. And there's no way that he's going to change that only a few days later. So I think it's going to stick to that... Uh, sorry, I think Solskjaer is going to stick to that 3-5-2. You let me know what you think about that in the comments. You know, so many United fans, I think, fairly, would say that's just Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being a bit desperate, uh, sort of throwing his 4-2-3-1 out of the window. But at the same time, it was at least a, a realisation and an acceptance that the 4-2-3-1 wasn't working. And that this, you know, even if it isn't suited to our squad overall, considering we've been building towards that 4-2-3-1 for a good few summers, it right now is the right thing to do. So who's going to start? Because that game against Spurs saw Rafael Varane return from injury. I think, he's, I think he stays in this team. I don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to change anything in that back five. I think he's going to keep De Gea there. I think Shaw, Maguire, Varane, Lindelof and Aaron wan will start that game. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But for me, it's, it's quite obvious. I, don't, I think that he's not going to change it. The, the only change that could happen really, I think, is maybe Varane, Varane sorry, being rested. Because... Varane's only just come back from injury. So if we were to play Varane here and he gets a little bit of a niggle, he's ruled out the City game, which arguably out of the two is more significant. So I don't think there's going to be any change to that back five. And I don't think there really would be under Solskjaer. As I said, he's, he's waited like 20 games for a clean sheet. We finally get one. I don't think he's going to ring the changes in. Only a couple of days later. It depends whether or not... The, he said there was a couple of niggles in training. So it depends whether those niggles are to do with uh, Varane or maybe Cavani. I don't know, but I don't think that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to change that back five. I'd be very surprised anyway. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But let's move on to midfield. And in midfield, again, there are changes that could happen here. Paul Pogba, he's available. He's obviously suspended domestically because of that red card against Liverpool. But Paul Pogba, I don't think will come into this team. Again, I don't expect there to be any changes. I expect it fully to be Fred and McTominay inside that midfield with Bruno Fernandes as that number 10. One thing I would say about Bruno's performance against Spurs, it was fantastic. He really held his position. He didn't run out, didn't run, you know, run it into space, aggressively press, sort of chaotically, as I said he needed to do. He held his role and he properly linked that midfield to that attack. And that made a big, big difference to this Manchester United setup against Spurs. So I think Fernandez played that role again, man. He played it really, really well. And I actually think Fred and McTominay, I thought they worked well inside that. Of course they did, because Look, they've got a back five behind them there. There's real security for them in the same sense that Fred and McTominay are supposed to give that security to maybe Fernandez and, and whoever plays up front and just the overall shape of the team. I would say that because we play with three centre-backs, Fred and McTominay had more freedom to press knowing that if they miss the ball, they're probably going to get covered by players behind them. Fred and McTominay, I expect them to start here again. In a game where Solskjaer continued, right now is... Is, the, is as harsh... No, it's not as harsh as it could get. It could get worse. Of course it could get worse. But I don't think it can get any lower than that Liverpool game. And he trusted those players to do a performance against Spurs and they delivered. So why would he, why would he then take a risk on Paul Pogba? A player 
who apparently at half time was told don't do anything silly against Liverpool and goes on only a few minutes later and gets a rash red card sort of got caught up in the wave of the emotion of that day and the frustration of all Manchester United's players were put into that tackle. So at that particular moment in time, Pogba showed Solskjaer that he couldn't be trusted in that situation. Therefore, is Solskjaer really going to trust him to come in here in a, in a game where a result is absolutely necessary? I don't, I don't think he will. I think he'll stick to Fred and McTominay. Whether or not you think that's the right thing to do, that's a different debate. But I think Solskjaer is going to stick to what he trusts, stick to what he knows. And saying that, you know, he's, he's moved away from the 4-2-3-1. So in that sense, he's not completely sticking to what he trusts and what he knows. But I just don't think that he's going to switch Fred and McTominay from that midfield. It, it worked against Spurs. He's going to be hoping for a similar performance against Atalanta. What we saw against Atalanta in the first leg at home is how good they are going forward. How much space that they created when we just pressed in that 4-2-4. We have to make sure that space doesn't exist we have to make sure that the whole team is sitting quite compact. If they sit in three lines, as Gary Neville showed after the game, they sit like 20, 30 metres between the front line and the back line. Not like 40, 50, not a huge disconnect between the front and the back. That's important. And again, I think that's why Fred and McTominay will play there and why Fernandez has to hold his position. It's crucial that he holds his position. But I think the biggest question that we've got here is do Ronaldo and Cavani start again? Because at 70, at a combined age of 70 years, they are old. Ronaldo's kind of shown over his whole career that there's no point down Ronaldo. He's just a freak of nature. But Edison Cavani sort of, he went off, Ronaldo went off, Fernandez went off. So it kept them all fresh. And I actually expect Ronaldo and Cavani both to start this game. It might be a slightly different game. Now, Spurs, they they kind of sat in their shape. They, they, they were trying to press against us. But let's be honest, the Spurs were completely abysmal. And Atalanta is going to be a far harder opposition than Spurs. So this formation will be tested in different ways to how it was not tested, really, against Spurs. Now, Cavani, as I said, I think Solskjaer will start him here. I think he'll start him up front. I think he'll start him alongside Ronaldo. And I think he'll want the same sort of performance, the same sort of commitment from everybody. And as I said in that game, nobody does it better than Cavani in terms of that overall attitude to being on the pitch. At 34, he is experienced, but he shows it in how he plays, how he chases. No, it's not just chasing down the ball, man. It's showing it's showing work rate, work ethic, leading players, telling players where to be. He's using his experience in the right way. Absolutely. And at 34, he does so much more than so many other players on that pitch because that's his style. He's tenacious. And we're playing away from home. I think there's questions here about whether or not Rashford should or could be starting this game because against Atalanta, there will be more space in behind. So we are looking properly at counter-attacking. And it's away from home in Europe, as is the case. We know, win your home games, try and draw away. And right now, given how the group has gone, I think we're topped by two points at the moment. We just can't afford to lose this one. So maybe United will play slightly different here. Maybe we'll, we'll play slightly deeper, properly drop into a back seven, and then just try and hit on the counter-attack. And in that sense, maybe Rashford would make more sense. But that is my predicted 11. That's what I think Solskjaer will play against Atalanta. I don't think he'll change a thing. Now, of course, that's something that really stung Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Manchester United. So he's done it more than once in terms of burning a, a team out, a team that he gets used to playing and a team that he ends up not rotating much and a team that eventually runs out of steam. And when you're two strikers of a combined age of 70, that's going to happen sooner rather than later. I don't personally think he's going to make any changes from that team. What do you think? You let me know in the comments below. But in terms of my preferred 11, there are a couple of changes that I would make. And this is the team that I would play. As I said, a couple of changes. You might not agree. I'm going to go for drop, not dropping Varane. I'm going to keep Varane on the bench because I, I need, I want Varane to be ready for that City game 100%. I think if you give him the full 90 against Spurs, expect him to play a full 90 against Atalanta away, which will be a, high, a higher tempo game and then expect him to be fit again for his third 90 minutes in, in a week after returning from injury, I don't personally think it will happen. I might be wrong, but I don't think I will. I am. That's why I would start Shaw as the left centre-back, move Maguire into the middle and put Tellez there as the left wing-back. Left wing-back is certainly a position which should suit Tellez better because he's more like a left winger than he is a left-back anyway. And Shaw has actually played quite well as that third left centre-back before. So that's what I would do. And up front, I would play Rashford instead of Ronaldo. As I said, Atalanta are going to come at United far more than Spurs did. Spurs just had no attacking threat whatsoever. 
made it quite easy for us to defend, although we did defend well, and of course you should defend well, when you've got a back five and Fred and McTominay dropping into a back seven. If you're not going to keep a clean sheet, then you never are. But I think United will probably be able to use and exploit the pace of Marcus Rashford a little bit more against Atalanta than we would have or could have against Spurs. So that's why I would start him alongside Ronaldo. Maybe, maybe you could start him alongside Cavani, but it's Mr. Champions League. You don't drop Ronaldo in Champions League games, or you just don't drop Ronaldo, period. So I would play Rashford alongside Ronaldo and then maybe bring Cavani on in about the 65th minute. But again, we've got good subs. Where's Jaden Sancho here? Where's Mason Greenwood here? This formation doesn't suit everybody inside this squad. Absolutely does not. The only formations that really do are the 4-2-3-1 and the 4-3-3. Now, maybe we can move towards that 4-3-3 sorry, after these two games. But I personally don't think there's going to be any changes really against Atalanta. As I said, my predicted 11, I think he's going to stick to what happened against Spurs. The exact same 11. Whether or not you think that's the right thing, that's a different question. And if, I'm my, if you're looking at my preferred 11, I would make a couple of changes. I'd bring Tellez in there at left wing back, move Shaw into a third left centre back position to allow Varane to make sure he's fit and ready for the City game, which I would argue out of the two games is more significant. But every game's significant right now for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's manager, right? With everything that's gone on with Spurs and Conte and Nuno Espirito Santo, this is the, the pressure gets cranked up further and further and further. Barcelona got rid of Coman. Spurs got rid of Conte. But Solskjaer is still in his job. And the way he's speaking, he's, I don't know, he really feels like he's, he's got another chance. I ruled it out. I said, no, there's no way that Manchester United are going to keep him after the international break. And maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was. And if, if I was wrong, what's, what's going to happen going forward? I don't think it will be this in the long term, but certainly for this game, certainly for Spurs, I think probably against City as well, I expect United to stick to this 3-5-2. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. What would you change? What do you want to see different against Atalanta in terms of the formation? You let me know in the comments and drop a like on the video, please, if you would subscribe to United People's TV. As I said, huge game, just big games everywhere for United. And this one is no different against Atalanta.